Now, you know that I'm a Trump fan. I cop it from all sides, like you probably do if you are as well. But can I tell you why I'm a real Trump fan in this election? Because of his response to when he was shot at. Remember, fight. That was his response. And there's this image which... I don't know who designed it. It's popped up on a whole bunch of sort of fringe T-shirt websites. None of them in my size. But I love this image because it is the internal spirit of somebody who will not get knocked down, will not be put in their place, will just keep going. And think about this. If it was any of us who had been shot at, let alone hit, our reaction would be to cower. A culture that's all about victimhood, well, it turns into a little ball and hides. Not Trump. Like him, dislike him, whatever. The set of stones on this guy, well, they're their own version of Mount Rushmore. And I know I will cop it on the internet for saying it. But how can you not think that when this was his reaction after he'd been shot? I love that. I love that surge of adrenaline that didn't turn into fear. It turned into standing up, chest out, push back. And, of course, there are plenty of things that he says that I don't like. There's plenty of ways that he does things that I think he could do better. But this is the imperfect vessel who is standing up like previous generations have. Like people who are constantly told everything is wrong with their worldview. He goes, no, here's our line, dig in and push. Well, as you know today, he didn't get shot at, but he was potentially due to die today as a second lunatic tried to set up on a golf course to shoot, kill and as well, film it all on a GoPro that presumably would go straight up to social media. His own version of the Zabruder film. But unlike the Zabruder film, which of course was Kennedy getting shot and somebody else filming it, the guy wanting to kill the president was the one who wanted to film it. Breaking news, the FBI is now investigating a shooting in West Palm Beach as an attempted assassination against former President Donald Trump. The second time in just two months, President Trump is safe following gunshots in his vicinity. It was incredible today to see all the different news websites lead with this in the morning because it was a morning story and then slowly but surely sort of, yeah, and lots of other stuff. Two organisations deserve credit. Sky News kept it up, lead story all day. So did the Sydney Morning Herald. Well done to both, because it is the only thing anyone will remember from today. And it is the second time somebody has tried to go after the bloke who might be this close to the presidency, because he is this close to the presidency. This didn't happen with Obama. Remember all of the garbage about how racist America was and how they would respond to their first black president. Zero of these moments. Instead, Trump, two in a couple of months. This is how close it got. Probably between three and 500 yards, but with a rifle and a scope like that, that's not a long distance. Channel 9, excellent explanation. This was one hole on a golf course away from where Trump was playing. It was 1.30 in the afternoon at his Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach when Donald Trump was walking between the fifth and sixth holes. One hole ahead, a Secret Service agent was securing the area prior to the former president's arrival. That agent spotted the barrel of a rifle poking through the bushes. The agent fired four to six shots at the suspect. It's not clear if Ralph fired back. Now, two scenarios here. One... Amazing. Like, think about any of us walking on a golf course or in a park, what you would be able to notice in the bushes. Something as long as the seventh hole, being able on either side and to see the barrel of the gun. Unbelievable. Frightening that even after he shot 
four to six times in the direction of the gunman, the gunman wasn't hit. Which means if there was a scenario of shots coming this way and those were the shots coming back, the likelihood is that there would be many more shots than what we saw with our own eyes back in July. Now, again, we are in this moment where there is an organisation whose job it is to create a bubble around a president. Because Trump is who he is, he's not going to hide in the ballroom of his house. He's not going to hide at Mar-a-Lago. He's not going to hide in the penthouse in New York. He is going to walk out onto a golf course. That's a huge threat area, but he ain't going to stop and you have to find a way to protect him. But amazingly today, there is a difference between somebody who's been a president and somebody who's potentially about to be a president and somebody who is the president. This is even after the former president, who may well be about to become the president again, or at the very least is certainly this close to it right now, they admitted today there wasn't as much security around him as there would be if Biden was playing golf. Well, you got to understand the golf course is surrounded by shrubbery. So, so when somebody gets into the shrubbery, they're pretty much out of sight. All right. And at this level that he is at right now, he's not the city president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. But because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the Secret Service deems possible. So I would imagine that the next time he comes at a golf course, there'll probably be a little bit more people around the perimeter. Dear God, the man has already been shot at. There are how many threats that are out there? And America is sadly a country with too many mentally ill people and too, many access, too much access to weapons. We see it in so many occasions at so many times, and that's not to offend the gun owners, gun, gun owners of America. That's just the reality of what's happening here. But it all depends whether he's sworn in or not sworn in when he is one of two people who are on a trajectory to being the next president. The idea that both Trump and Harris are not surrounded as if they were president right now should be frightening to everyone because the consequences of one of those two candidates being injured or losing their life would be catastrophic for the United States. The flow-on effect around the Western world would be enormous. So in, they should be wrapping potential presidents in the same bubble as the president because we are tonight 50 days away from that election. Now, we also had been told that the Secret Service had somehow learnt its lesson from, believe it or not, the other time, this year, that somebody was planning to kill Donald Trump and successfully got shots off and successfully hit him in the, uh, in the ear. Millimetres between a story that people want to forget and a moment in history that your kids will learn about for the rest of time. The person responsible for the Secret Service at that moment, as you just saw, she gave evidence, no answers. She eventually wasn't sacked, of course, because nobody gets sacked for failures in the United States upper echelons under this administration. So she, of course, was allowed to resign. One of the people who was questioning her said something, again, frightening, regardless of whether you're a Trump or a Harris supporter, booster, or just somebody who wants the United States, not China, or Russia to be the top of the tree. The problem is you've got a Secret Service, at least in my opinion and in the public's eye, that is compromised and that it lacks in leadership. And you've got brave agents on the ground, obviously, one who took that shot. But why in the world would anybody be anywhere near the perimeter of this, this line of sight that we talk about? Now, I'm not going to go on forever and ever. There's other things to talk about. We'll get to all of those things. But back to that image of Trump and fight. It is just this absolute, in my view, guiding symbol of everything he's about, but more importantly, everything that those of us who want him to succeed are fighting against. That was his reaction when everyone else would cower, when everyone else would hide. Today, 
Sean Hannity, who will be interviewing people in and around this incident tomorrow, middle of the day, Fox News. We'll have it for you here tomorrow at nine. This is what he had to say about the president's reaction after the incident took place and we all saw the footage of the sniper's nest, where the plan was all there, where the camera was all set up, where there was ceramic tiles, that's what's in the, the plastic bags, and, of course, the AK with the sight on it. This was apparently Trump's response. Honestly, like, dislike, hate the man. How could you not be impressed that this is his response when that's what could have happened? No. Then when the president found out everybody was safe and nobody had been harmed, uh, I guess in typical fight, fight, fight fashion, Trump said uh, to Steve, and then he related to me, um, oh, I really wanted to finish the hole. I was even, and I had a, I had a, a birdie putt. I love it. I really love it. And again, I know what I'm copping for this. I can see the Turnbull Times, the Guardian getting ready with their second by second review. I know what's going to happen over at Channel Two. I know the Twitter's. Ah, oh, there he. Is. How can you not want that in a leader? That rather than somebody who cowers and then stretches it out and talks about it. All, the, all the stuff that would happen if it was anyone else. But this bloke, he shows us in these moments where there's no advisors, there's no time to think, exactly the type of person that he would be and that he is and that he would be as a president, which is why, again, I'm all in. I get why that is problematic. I get why sometimes that's difficult and I lose mates as a result of it, but that's why I remain as all in on the bloke as I ever have been. Now, about the lunatic, and I'm sorry, you know, we're very sensitive to mental health on this program, but when you're doing this stuff, psycho, right? Now, generally speaking, we don't talk about assailants, but because, thankfully, everyone is alive on both sides of this, I'll do it quickly. The son of this bloke says that he hated Trump like every other thinking person. This bloke is 58 years of age. He apparently had a bee in his bonnet about things like uh, Ukraine, but he's alive. So we're going to find out more. And now, no doubt, someone somewhere is going to find something that somehow will mean, oh, he's not as dangerous as he seems. No, he's as kooky as you think he is. But there's another part of this story that nobody attached to it today. And I wonder why. Remember when he was shot at the first time. And this was the message from his political opponent. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. We've traveled before throughout our history. Violence has never been the answer. Great sentiment. The problem is he'd spent months and months and months talking about a threat to democracy, country, your sky will fall in, dark brand and all of that business. Have a look today on one of the television shows that is covering the breaking news, not six hours later, not four days after, the breaking news of what could have been potentially the death of one of two people who will be the next president of the United States. Oh, apparently it's Trump's fault. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate, J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence? He's the one that was shot at and was about to be shot at. But because it's 50 days out, no mercy, no mercy because this is the worst of the worst. Another thing is that they don't just hate Trump. One of them actually told us that they hate anyone who supports Trump because they think you too are surplus to the future of the world. Have a look. Everything he does is despicable. The reason why it doesn't end his career is because his supporters are just as despicable. Screw you, pal. Screw you. Now, of course, let me be very quick when this gets edited up somewhere else to say no violence against that guy whatsoever, no threats. But that's the insight. The American election is something that I am so focused on because of its importance to the rest of the world. America is at a fork in the road. 
And in my view, the fundamental fork in the road here is Trump will challenge a failing system, Harris will continue it and hide behind it. If you have the chance to vote in the United States and you are watching this online somewhere, fight, fight, fight. Metaphorically, with your strength, with your purpose, not with your fists, not with your guns, but fight, fight, fight. Because the rest of the world is watching and we care deeply about who wins.